from the Cyber Hub Bunker and Studio. You're tuning in to the Cyber Hub Podcast. And now for your host and CISO, James A. Folks, good morning. James Azar here with your practitioner brief. Happy Wednesday, a day before Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of those that are celebrating tomorrow. A lot of uh, joy and peace. May you finally find some comfort this year from what has been a enormously challenging year uh, for everyone on the globe. Um, so I'll be remiss to to not wish you all that. Before we get started on today's podcast, though, if you don't mind and you love our content, please subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening on your favorite podcast listening platform, please subscribe, like, share. Um, that's how we know you like our content. You can find our entire practitioner brief on our website at cyberhubpodcast.com. So you can go and check it out there. So a few housekeeping things before we get into today's practitioner brief. Tomorrow, I will not be doing this. It's Christmas Eve. We're not going to worry you with cyber unless there's something breaking, meaning something big happens today, overnight or tomorrow. I won't be doing this. If, if I do something, it'll only be because of that. However, tomorrow I will be live on LinkedIn for CISO Thursday with my friends Renee Small and Christophe Follon, as well as the magnificent Naomi Buckwalter. We'll be doing an AMA tomorrow on LinkedIn Live, so you can tune in. If you don't know how to get it, just go to my uh, LinkedIn page, James J. Azar, and you can see the feed there and interact with us and talk to us, and it'll be great. Um, it's a fun little thing we do, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. And on Christmas Day, I'll be joined by Charity Wright. We'll be talking about SolarWinds, which we're going to talk about here a little bit more about and attribution and kind of the, the intersection of politics and cyber and attribution and, and so forth. That's a little bit hindering some of the, the investigation um, to many people. There's, there's a lot of confusion right now. So without further ado, let's get right into today's practitioner brief. Three short but very important stories we'll start with the solar winds uh, more information has come out of that uh, millions of devices have are affected by the vulnerabilities used in the tools stolen from FireEye, and dhs details risk of using chinese data services and equipment to the u.s so let's go ahead and get started with solar winds investigation continues more and more companies are joining the effort in analyzing and searching and, and doing the critical work uh, that's needed to do that. Um, one of these um, is shared by a cybersecurity firm called TrueSec and includes high profile tech companies like Intel, NVIDIA, Cisco, Cox Communication and Belkin, just to name a few. Now, this list is extremely long. Um, this is a story from Bleeping Computer. I've attached the link on our website at cyberhubpodcast.com. You can go there. Um, read the story that I'm about to kind of break down for y'all and also click the link and see the entire list of companies. Literally the entire list of companies is half that article, if not more. So MediaTek, which is the world's second largest provider of fabulous semiconductors might have also been specifically targeted in this campaign, but that hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, to build the list of victims infected with the sunburst backdoors via the compromised updated mechanism of the SolarWinds Orion IT management platform, the researchers decoded a dynamically generated part of the C2 subdomain for each of the compromised devices. Um, by decoding the list of subdomains generated by the malware's domain generated generation algorithm, uh, TrueSec and other security firms, uh, including Kaspersky, Reddrip, and Privacio, were able to find many well-known organizations that have already or may disclose targeted attacks later on. Uh, Microsoft also found that 40 of their customers had their networks infiltrated uh, following the SolarWinds supply chain. So... We, we know some of the government list, but let me give it to you, kind of uh, breaking it down. So we know that Treasury was a part of it, the National Telecommunication and Information Administration, the Department of State, uh, NIH, uh, DHS, DOE, which is the Department of Energy, the National Nuclear Security Administration, and NSA, some U.S. states as well. Many other companies are on this list. I'm not going to name them, but... If you're getting questions about who's impacted and you're not really getting straight answers, looking at this list might give you an idea more or less um, and, and you're able to mitigate that. Um, so 
it, it, it's a challenging time for many of us folks with the solar winds thing. Um, it, it, it's at a bad time of year in a very challenging year and a sophisticated attack in, in the way that it's the software supply chain. Well, we often talk about supply chain attacks. We often talk about hardware or, or APIs or, or, you know, encryption keys and decryption keys and all that good stuff. But this was far more sophisticated. And so it's, 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 it's bound to have some, some wide ranging impacts and the fallout isn't going to be done tomorrow or next week. We'll, uh, uh, keep this up for 60 days, folks. I mean, I think we're going to be talking solar winds until at least Valentine's Day, at least. With every week more and more companies saying they were impacted and how they were impacted and so forth. My hope, though, is that through this, we're able to get enough information and set a standard of the information we share post-breach to help others, to help the security community, to help everyone. So really important. Millions of devices are exposed to potential attacks, This um, exploiting the vulnerabilities used in the tools that threat actors recently stole from FireEye. Uh, this is according to a report yesterday from Qualys that said they identified more than 7.5 million instances related to vulnerabilities associated with the stolen FireEye tools and compromised versions of the SolarWinds Orion products. Again, this keeps going. The vulnerabilities were discovered across nearly 5.3 million unique assets uh, belonging to Qualys's more than 15,000 customers. As FireEye pointed out, when they disclosed it, that um, some of the systems and, and tools that were stolen were the red team assessment tools, um, no zero day vulnerabilities are exploited by those tools. Um, so, the stolen uh, FireEye tools exploit 16 known vulnerabilities affecting products from Pulse Secure, Microsoft, Fortinet, um, Altesian, Citrix, Zoho, and Adobe. Um, however, uh, Qualys pointed out that a vast majority of the vulnerable instances, 99.84, are exposed to attacks due to eight critical and high severity flaws affecting Microsoft products. Patching these can be, again, really important. So we go back to the basics on this of patching, vulnerability management, network uh, uh, network uh, visibility, cloud visibility, data visibility. All <laughs> Visibility is really important right now, folks. Um, critical. In fact, um, myself included and, and, and many of my peers, um, one of the key things in kind of searching of whether we need to rebuild our infrastructure or patch and so forth has to do with visibility and having data to where you can compare uh, pre to post and see if there's any anomalies there and know where to look and dig. So very important. In an advisory this week, the Department of Homeland Security and its acting secretary, Chad Wolf, warned American organizations of the risks posed by using data services and equipment from firms that have ties to the People's Republic of China. Both businesses and customers in the United States are at risk due to the PRC's data collection activities, DHS warns. Some of these risks include the theft of confidential business data, trade secrets and IP, violation of privacy and export laws, breach of contractual provisions, and risk of surveillance. Um, in its advisory, DHS also points out that the data theft operation performed under the command of the Chinese government represents a persistent growing threat to the U.S., especially since newly uh, enacted laws require all PRC businesses and citizens to take actions related to the collection, transmission, and storage of data. In addition to detailing the various data collection practices of the Chinese government and providing an overview of the applicable laws recently passed in the country, the advisory offers extensive details on the risks faced by companies partnering with China or firms associated with the Chinese Communist Party in China. Um, Secretary Wolf, um, who is... Um, um, leading DHS at the moment, said the threats to our peace and prosperity emanate largely from China. Instead of competing fairly on a level playing field, China undermines the international system. Instead of fighting on the conventional battlefield, China wages secret disinformation and propaganda wars to cripple us from within. And the story begins. Um, yeah, folks, China uh, back in the covers. So uh, back in the headlines, I'm sorry. So <laughs> interesting or not so much. That's it for us here today, folks. Um, again, tomorrow I'll be live on LinkedIn, 11 a.m. Renee Small, Christoph, and the wonderful, magnificent Naomi Buckwalter. 
AMA, CISO Thursdays on LinkedIn. Friday, I'll be live on LinkedIn, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Charity Wright. We're going to be talking about um, so Christmas Day. If you're not with family, if you're alone, if you're social distancing, if you're just, you know, take a break from Netflix for a little while, come join us. We're going to talk a little bit about that and probably a bunch of other stuff uh, over the year. So you can do that as well. That's it for us here today, guys. Thank you so much for listening. Thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe and share this podcast. I do appreciate all of your feedback and all of your support. You guys are all very, very kind. We'll be back on Monday. Until then, folks, Merry Christmas. Happy, Merry, Merry Christmas. Next week will be, well, it's a full slate next week, guys. I'm not taking New Year's Eve off, so don't worry about that. But New Year's Day, I'm sleeping. Um, And stay cyber safe, guys. We love feedback, so make sure to connect with us media to our podcast on your favorite podcast listening platform